Advanced Analysis in General Order No. 1, issued on September 2, 1945, General Douglas MacArthur gave directions to Chiang Kai-shek of the Republic of China to accept the surrender of Japanese troops in Taiwan. The Generalissimo accepted these orders. This has created a principal-agent relationship. The surrender ceremonies on October 25, 1945 marked the beginning of the military occupation. Under international law, the occupier, also known as the occupying power, or more specifically, the principal occupying power, is the conqueror. In consideration of the historical record of military attacks against Taiwan, this will be the United States of America. Although the surrender ceremonies in Taiwan on October 25, 1945 were ostensibly conducted on behalf of the Allies, it must be recognized that the ensuing military occupation of Taiwan was conducted on behalf of the principal occupying power, the United States of America. Note. Some seven years later, after the coming into force of the San Francisco Peace Treaty, the Allies stopped functioning as a group. However, the operation of the principal occupying power continued. Military Occupation The fact that Chinese nationalist forces came to Taiwan to conduct a military occupation is confirmed by many published sources. Number 11. Chiang Kai-shek was sent to Taiwan for a military occupation. Many nations have also voiced their reservation regarding the legal status of Taiwan. Sir Anthony Eden, the British Foreign Minister, stated on February 4, 1955, as follows. In the fall of 1945, the administration of Formosa was taken over from the Japanese by the Chinese forces at the direction of the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers. But this was not a session, nor did it in itself involve any change of sovereignty. The arrangement made with Chiang Kai-shek put him there on a basis of military occupation, pending further arrangements and did not, of themselves, constitute the territory. Chinese. Under the Peace Treaty of April 1952, Japan formally renounced all right, title and claim to Formosa and the Pescadores, but again, this did not operate as a transfer to Chinese sovereignty, whether to the People's Republic of China or to the Chinese nationalist authorities. Formosa and the Pescadores are therefore, in the view of Her Majesty's government, territory, the de jure sovereignty over which is uncertain or undetermined. Number 12. October 25, 1945 marked the beginning of the military occupation. A CRS report for Congress contains the following succinct explanation. After Japan's defeat in 1945, Taiwan and the Pescadores were assigned to the Republic of China for purposes of post-war occupation. Taiwan was still under this occupation four years later, when the ROC government fled to Taiwan after the communist victory in the civil war on mainland China. Number 13. Military Occupation of Taiwan by the Nationalist Chinese ROC A comprehensive article in the Yale Law Journal agreed that the Japanese surrender ceremonies only marked the beginning of the military occupation. At the conclusion of World War II, the Supreme Commander of Allied Command in the Pacific, General Douglas MacArthur, authorized the Nationalist Chinese authorities to accept the surrender of Formosa from the Japanese and to undertake temporarily military occupation of the island as a trustee on behalf of the Allied powers led by the United States. Chinese occupation proved unfortunate. Maladministration, corruption, atrocities and deprivations of human rights ensued. Number 14. Military Occupation Following the Japanese Surrender In discussing cross-strait relations, an article in the American Journal of International Law concluded that the PRC was a legitimate government and Taiwan was under military occupation. After occupying Taiwan in 1945, as a result of Japan's surrender, the nationalists were defeated on the mainland in 1949, abandoning it to retreat to Taiwan. In that year, the PRC was established. Number 15. Taiwan is occupied territory. A 1949 CIA report on the military occupation of Taiwan was originally classified as secret. From the legal standpoint, Taiwan is not part of the Republic of China. A declassified CIA report on Taiwan, written in March 1949, says, 
Pending a Japanese peace treaty, the island remains occupied territory, in which the US has propriety interests. The report continues. The report says the communist control of the island would have seriously unfavorable strategic implications for the US. It says that the native population of Taiwan would welcome release from Chinese control, but was not strong enough to stage a successful revolt. When first written in 1949, the report was classified as secret. There is a strong sentiment in Taiwan favoring autonomy, but the situation is complicated by the conflicting interests of the native Taiwanese and Chinese nationalist element. The report says, the Taiwanese bitterly resent the performance of the nationalist administration on Taiwan since VJ, victory over Japan Day, it adds. According to the CIA, the Chinese rulers had exploited the native population to the limit without regard for their welfare or the preservation of the island's resources. Summary Considerations Three Central Questions In relation to the military occupation of a particular area, we are faced with three central questions, all of which must be answered based on the customary laws of warfare. When did the military occupation begin? For Taiwan, the answer is October 25th, 1945. Who is the occupying power? For Taiwan, the answer is the United States of America. The military occupation will be conducted by a US federal agency, the United States military government. A definition is provided as follows. Military government is the form of administration by which an occupying power exercises governmental authority over occupied territory. Importantly, however, the United States has delegated the military occupation of Taiwan to the military forces under Chiang Kai-shek. This is a principal agent relationship. When did the military occupation end? To answer this question requires an in-depth knowledge of military occupation issues. For now, let us say that the military occupation of Taiwan did not end with the coming into force of the San Francisco Peace Treaty on April 28, 1952. Further details will be given in later videos. The ROC as a government in exile When the ROC fled to occupy Taiwan in December 1949, it was moving outside of Chinese national territory and immediately became a government in exile. The actions of governments in exile may be overviewed as follows. Actions of governments in exile International law recognizes that governments in exile may undertake many types of actions in the conduct of their daily affairs. These actions include Becoming a party to a bilateral or international treaty Amending or revising its own constitution retaining or newly obtaining diplomatic recognition by sovereign states, issuing identity cards, allowing the formation of new political parties, instituting democratic reforms, holding elections, allowing for direct or more broadly based elections of its government offices, etc. However, none of these actions can serve to Legitimatize a government in exile to become the internationally recognized legal government of its current locality. Legitimatize a government in exile's constitution to become the true organic law of its current locality. By definition, a government in exile is spoken of in terms of its native country. Hence, it must return to its native country and regain power there in order to obtain legitimacy as a legal government of that geographic area. In other words, for the Republic of China to regain international legitimacy and to regain the status of a state recognized by the international community, it must move back to Nanjing, China and resume governance there.